What's up guys? I'm here to do uh, top, my top 10 favorite movies. Now, I did script this video a little because when I did the top 15 best Disney Channel shows that went on for quite a while, this might be in parts as well. I hope not. At least not a whole lot, like six. But yeah, these are my top 10 favorite movies. So I'll be reading off my notes here. So, and it's going to be some ad lib stuff in there as well, but <clears throat> let's get started. So, my top 10 favorite movies. Number 10 is Nightmare Before Christmas, directed by Tim Burton. The Nightmare Before Christmas is about Jack Skellington, an actual skeleton, skeleton. That's a weird last name. An actual skeleton who grows weary of being the Pumpkin King, which is his title in Halloween Town. So one day, Jack stumbles across a door that leads him to Christmas Town, and this is how Christmas was introduced to him. So I think, you know, everyone at this point has seen this movie, considering it comes, it comes on at least twice a year because it's both a Halloween and a Christmas movie, so that alone is pretty sweet. So, yeah, Jack... He, he tries to do his own version of Christmas in Halloween Town, and bad shit's going to go down. Sally is the only one who knows about it, but no one is going to listen to her. And, I don't know, I feel like with half of these movies on this list, I really don't have to explain what they're about, because everyone's seen them, but you never know. That, and at least, to make it sound like at least I know what they're about, but then again, you know, I do. So, yeah. That's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Number nine is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Now, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is based off a film, I mean, it's a film based off a novel but of the same name, written by Ken, Ken Kesey. Maybe it's pronounced Casey, but it's, it's spelled K-E-S-E-Y, I don't know. But Ken, we'll call him Ken. And the movie stars Jack Nicholson, Christopher Lloyd, well, he's not like one of the main, main characters. He's kind of a secondary character. Jack Nicholson, Louise Fletcher, Will Sampson, William Redfield, Brad Dourif, who I believe goes on to do the voice of Chucky in the Child's Play series. I could be wrong about that, but, you know, that's what he's most famous for. Uh, Danny DeVito, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Pretty good show. Christopher Lloyd, you know, Back to the Future, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Scatman Crothers, well, you should know who that is. And the film is about a guy named Mac, or at least that's what he's called. It's not literally Mac, but that's beside the point. He was almost sentenced to prison for raping a 15-year-old girl. And this is the character we're supposed to be rooting for. I'm not kidding. But, believe it or not, he's actually not one of the worst guys ever. You really do actually end up rooting for him. So he pretends to have some mental issues, so he'll go to a mental institution instead of prison. But, you know, and he meets all these crazy characters again, played by the few people that I've listed before. And I believe it's Louise Fletcher who plays Nurse Ratchet, who is just kind of a bitch, to be honest. But, now this film has one of the most tragic and yet somehow happiest endings ever. Like, j just see the movie to know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to spoil it for you. And I think it's about a little over two hours long, maybe. Still a good movie. You know, good drama and everything. But uh, an inter interesting fact about the film, it was shot at Oregon State Hospital in Salem, Oregon, which is where, in the novel, that's where it takes place at. So... Props to them, I guess. Number eight is Jurassic Park, which is based off the Michael Crichton novel of the same name. I have the book. It's really good. A bit different from the movie, but, you know, that's pretty much with every book and film adaptation. <coughs> but that's beside the point. Jurassic Park is about Isla Nublar, if I'm pronouncing that right, an island located off, the, off of uh, Costa Rica's Pacific Coast. 
have a hard time talking. Where a billionaire and a small team of genetic scientists have created a wildlife park of cloned dinosaurs. Now, uh, again, this is probably one of those movies that everyone has seen, especially when it was re-released in the theaters last year, I believe, and it was in 3D. Now, I didn't go see it, because I'm not a big fan of 3D, but, you know, a lot of people did, and that was one of the reasons why Nostalgia Critic reviewed the movie again, but that's beside the point. Now, interesting fact about this film is that the roar from the T-Rex was supposedly a mix, of, a mix of sounds with a baby elephant, a tiger, um, an alligator, and I think that's about it. And, well, there's not really a whole lot to say about Jurassic Park. And, you know, it's, you know, dinosaurs on an island. But, you know, it's satisfying as all hell. And plus, I shouldn't have to say a whole lot about most of these movies. Everyone's seen most of them, pretty sure. And it's one of Spielberg's finest movies. And it's one of the reasons why he was my favorite director growing up. In a way, he still is. He kind of made me interested in making YouTube videos, believe it or not, when I was 10 years old, back when I had my original channel. But now I'm just rambling. So, now we're going to move on to number 7. Number 7 is probably my favorite horror movie of all time. Now, there's going to be horror-related stuff on this list, and that's ahead of this movie, obviously. But... To me, those other, when we get to those, they're not really going to count as horror horror to me, because there's like, you know, some comedy in it, but, well, same as this, but, anyways, yeah, this is my favorite genuine horror movie. Well, I don't know if genuine's the right word, but it's not realistic, but whatever. Nightmare on Elm Street, the 1984 original movie. It's probably my favorite horror movie because of its writing, directing, even effects for a low-budget 80s movie. It was pretty good. Characters, well, not all of them, but, you know, Nancy, Dad, her boy, Nancy's boyfriend, even the, uh, what's his name, Rod, who goes to prison. He's kind of a dick, but he didn't deserve what he got, but still entertaining to watch, but that's beside the point. But most of all, the best character is Freddy Goddamn Krueger, played by the great Robert Anglin, who did, who played, uh, Freddy Krueger throughout all the movies up until the remake, that's beside the point. The idea of a child killer who can come into your dreams and kill you, it's pretty scary on its own. But when that killer has an ugly, burnt up body and face and glove with knives on the fingers, and like the one glove thing, like Michael Jackson, but again, it's a weird reference, but you're guaranteed you're going to shit your pants. Seriously, I cannot think of any other horror movie better than this, at least in my opinion. Other people probably will, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I like Friday the 13th, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Psycho, and classics like that, but A Nightmare on Elm Street is the one horror film I can never get tired of watching. The one that I can't stop thinking about when someone mentions horror as a genre if we're talking about movies or whatever. And even if it doesn't scare me anymore considering I've seen the movie so many damn times, I can still find entertainment in it. I like the sequels as well, especially Dream Warriors and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. But the original is obviously the best. It's going to be the best. And an interesting side note, whenever the film doesn't have Nancy or her father in it, the critic reviews, like if you go on Rotten Tomatoes and look up like part 2, 4, and 5, and 6, whatever, they're usually negative. But if Nancy and her dad are in the movie, like the first one, the third one, and New Nightmare, they generally get a lot of praise, so, I don't know, I just thought it was, you know, kind of interesting to note that. Another interesting uh, note would be uh, this movie, uh, it's Johnny Depp's debut career. Hard to believe that he uh, looks better now than he did back then, but that's beside the point again. I say that's beside the point a lot, don't I? Sorry. But Johnny Depp also had the best death scene in this movie. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Just check it out. But, you know, don't watch before you go to sleep. There's a warning in the movie about that. The, the girls that sing. If you didn't get what I mean. Anyways. Oh, and don't even get me started on that piece of shit of a remake. 
I don't even want to talk about that.